I am Mr. Cup. My name is Gregory Hayward. This is a very important name. My objective is to reset the human compass and provide a whole new perspective that will deliver answers for all humankind. In this video, I'm going to show you the evidence to demonstrate that man is not one species, but instead, man is three species. This is a unique view, so unique that I've been unable to find any articles, journals, or information of any kind that supports my view. In fact, quite the opposite. A search of the internet typically results in spectacular dismissal. If you type into Google the following question, could a human not in our species still exist? This is the typical answer you will get. My guess is, if any did exist, and I'm doubtful, it would be in a remote place like Siberia. But some very grandiose claims have been made about yetis and other creatures being Neanderthals surviving today in places like Siberia. Therefore, the statement that man is three species is wholly unique. It is not given credence and it has never been raised in the public arena. However, in this series of videos, I'm going to show you that it is true. Furthermore, the implications for humankind are significant. All three species are distinctly different in their diet, their medicinal needs, their education and learning, their reasoning, their behavior, their sexual preferences, their crimes, and so on and so on. So for example, why do some humans get cancer and others do not? This is because different species are susceptible to different elements and current medicine does not recognize this. Whilst one species may depend on an omnivorous diet, that is plants and animals, another may require solely a fruit-based diet. If the wrong diet is advised, then the consequences are considerable. Hence, this is redefining for man. A one-fit-for-all approach to humans in all aspects of our social sphere is inadequate and verging on derisory. So, let me explain. Today, science maintains that man has evolved into a species called Homo sapiens from an ancestral lineage that spans millions of years. In the full evolutionary spectrum, a complex array of ancestral types exists, and each represents a node of divergence into separate lineages. However, there are missing links, and it is impossible to connect a full chronological series of species which leads to Homo sapiens, and that experts can agree upon. The main source for detailing the path of human evolution is fossil specimens. The nature of these and how they relate to specific species can be accurately described, but questions of how species evolved into other species can only be addressed by guesswork. It is generally thought that the root is to be found among ape-like species around 16 to 12 million years ago, or possibly later during the Miocene epoch. The great ape family is deemed to be our forefathers. Chimpanzees, bonobos and humans are considered to be more closely related to one another, whilst gorillas and orangutans are more distantly related. However, the ancestral lineages prior to these are hotly debated, and a number of different theories and ancestors are suggested. Conversely, the route from the apes to the more recent Homo, around 4 million years ago, is also a source of much controversy too. The question we must now ask is, is the modern scientific view correct? In other words, did humans evolve from the apes? On the surface, the various evolutionary nodes on the human family tree appear to have a logical pattern. However, if we truly ask ourselves whether humans evolved from the apes, the answer to this question is challenging. Scholars have only partial information on what happened when, and importantly, scientists have been unable to detect the moment of evolution for any species. They merely infer evolutionary signposts that help to frame our understanding of the emergence of humans. There is also little or no scientific pursuit to suggest that the morphology of apes to Homo may be the result of other factors that derive from alternative views to the theory of evolution. 
Similarly, the Homo family has inherent challenges. Evidence of tool making dates to about 3.3 million years ago in Kenya. However, the age of the oldest remains of the genus Homo is younger than this technological milestone, dating to some 2.8 million years ago in Ethiopia. The oldest known remains of a Homo sapiens, a collection of skull fragments, a complete jawbone and stone tools, dates to about 315,000 years ago. To advance, we now must ask, what is our vision? In the evolutionary debates, there are a number of scientific disciplines inherently connected. These include, for example, paleontology, which is the study of life forms via fossils, anthropology, the study of what makes us human, and genetics, the study of hereditary and the variation of inherited characteristics. Essentially, there is a high degree of divergence in the agendas of these disciplines, and this is almost as divergent as the nature of the evolutionary roots of humans. In particular, anthropology is the study of what makes us human, but whilst we remain inconclusive about the history of humans, the credence of the study of anthropology and the determination of what makes us human lacks any clarity. Yet, can we look at this from another angle? The evolutionary argument draws conclusions from fossilised remains. These include skull bones and other skeleton segments and cultural elements, for example, tools, clothing and artwork. Similar supportive evidence arises from the study of genetics. However, what if anything can we deduct from the behaviour of our ancestors that can provide us with a new vision and answer the question, who are we? The characteristic behaviour of our ancestors is hardly now visible to us. However, there are routes that can help us provide a clearer and definitively different view of us. For example, what components are visible and measurable today? We know that we are very closely related to the apes. However, this is not just in the evolutionary sense. Right now, today, we show a 98% similarity in our genetic makeup to that of the apes. Taking this argument on board, can we find evidence from this that will finally allow us to understand who are we and allows us to define human beings? In part two, we take a close look at our living relatives, the apes, that are alive and kicking today. Human and ape behaviour is seen to be highly similar and the results are groundbreaking for human knowledge, providing a whole new perspective.